Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about Swift strings. So let's get right into it. So to initialize Swift strings, you have to write something like this. For empty string, you can either create it by just double quotes or you can create it like this. Both of these are empty string. It's just other ways of creating empty string. And then this hello word constant will contain this hello word string. So these are some of the ways through which we can initialize a string. Let's see some of the properties. So for this hello word, we can either lowercase the hello word, we can uppercase it. So as you can see the result, if you do hello word dot lowercase, it would be lowercase. And if you do hello word dot uppercase, it will be uppercase. And then hello word is empty, then it will return false. And then if you want to create multi line string, then you need to use triple quotes. So if you click over here, you will see how it will print. It will be hello word this is multi string so this is how you create a multi string in swift and then if you want to check if a string has a prefix or suffix or not you can use these functions called has prefix and has suffix so password dot has prefix for this string we are checking if this string has prefix of one two three or not it does has one two three as prefix so it will return true and then we'll check if it has three four five as suffix and it does has three four five as suffix so it will return true again. Now let's see how to drop and remove characters from a string. So let's say our string is name variable and it's called Tom, Dick and Harry. And then if you want to drop the first character of this name string, then you can just write drop first and it would drop the first character, which is T and it will return the remaining string. Similarly, drop last will remove the last character and it will return the remaining string. And if you see, it did not modify the original string so drop functions does not modify the original string it just returns the string after removing the t character but it doesn't actually remove the t character similarly drop last will return the string after removing the y character which is the last character but it doesn't actually remove the last character now you can drop any other character in the string as well so let's say drop first three so it will drop the first three character of the string so that will be Tom and then it will just return Dick and Harry and you can drop any last characters as well. So from last if you say drop last and it will return the string after dropping the last five characters. Now if you see if I just print name it will give me the original string itself that is Tom Dick Harry it means the drop function does not modifies the string. If you want to modify the original string you can use remove first and remove last. Remove first and remove last will actually modify the string. So remove first will remove the first character of the string that is T and it will return the first character which it has removed and then remove last will return the last character of the string which is y and then if you print name now it will print it without the first and last character so that is how you can use drop and remove now if you want to concatenate two string you can use this plus keyword which is very simple all you have to do is just add this plus symbol in between your string it will concatenate your strings this is how it concatenates but what if you want to do some string interpolation for string interpolation we use this kind of symbol so inside of string double quotes you can use the slash and then in the brackets you, you can write anything it it doesn't have to be a string so for string concatenation you have to make sure your concat the strings only but for string interpolation you can use any other data types like 6 and 7 is integer here so 6 and 7 would be multiplied and it will return the output in our string so 6 times 7 is 42 and that is what we get in our output so if you want to do string interpolation you can use this slash and then the, these brackets and you inside the bracket you can use any type of data type and that will be added into the string now how do we work with characters in the string so to get each characters in the string you can simply run a for loop so the syntax looks something like this so for each character in this hello you can print this character and if i run it you will see the results over here, over here you see H E double L O is for this print statement over here. So running a for loop on a string will give you each character of the string. Now what if you have a array of character and you want to convert it into string? That is very simple. All you have to do is call this function string and inside that string you can just pass your character array and it will convert this character array to a simple string and this is very useful when you're solving string questions 
in data structure. Now there are multiple character properties which are very useful as well. So let's say we have created two characters A and Pi and then you can check if these characters are ASCII characters or not. So A is a ASCII character so you can use this function A dot is ASCII and this will return true. But pi is not a ASCII, so if you check pi dot is ASCII, then it will return false. And you can also check its ASCII value as well. A dot ASCII value will return you 65 and then pi dot ASCII value will return null because pi is not an ASCII character. And then you can create number literals as well with characters and then you can check whether it's a number or not. So let's say five we have created one character as five right and if we check five dot is number because five is a number inside a character it will return true also if you see this half half is also a number which we have inserted inside a character and if we check half dot is number then also we will get true now there are many other properties of character which we can use over here as well like five dot is whole number so five is a whole number so this will return true and then if you want to return this character as a number then you can use this five dot whole number value and it will return you five now half is not a whole number so half dot is whole number will return you false and half dot whole number value will return you Null. Now you can check if a character is a number and you can also check if a character is a letter or not. Now if you see A over here is a letter and if I say A dot is letter then it will return me a true but if I check A dot is number then it will return me a false. Now we can also check for symbols as well. So let's say we I have created this smiley symbol as a character and if I check smiley dot is symbol this will return me true but if I check smiley dot is letter then it will return me false because this is not a letter it's a symbol. Now again we can check for math symbol as well. So let's say I have created this math symbol plus as a character if I check plus dot is symbol will return me true because it is a symbol of math plus dot is letter will return me false because it's not letter now i can specifically check if plus is a math symbol or not so plus dot is math symbol will return me true but smiley dot is math symbol will return me false because smiley is not a math symbol you can also check for a character if it is a currency symbol or not by using this is currency symbol so let's say we have created this character dollar and i have entered this dollar symbol inside of this dollar constant and then if i check dollar dot is currency symbol then it will return me true and then we can also check if a character is a punctuation or not we can simply check it with using is punctuation so i have created this constant q mark and i have assigned it with a question mark as character and if i check q mark dot is punctuation this will return me true because question mark is a punctuation which is correct now for uh, characters for characters as well you can check if it is a lowercase or uppercase and then and if you want to convert it into lowercase or uppercase you can just simply say uppercase and lowercase so i have created two constant b and z b is lowercase so if i say b is lowercase it will return me true and z is uppercase so if i say z is uppercase it will return me true and now b is lowercase and if i say b dot uppercase then it will convert it into uppercase and return the value and z is uppercase and if i say z dot lowercase then i can convert it into lowercase so that's that is how you can use lowercase and uppercase with our characters now string indices, this is very important if you are doing data structure questions with string, these would be very helpful. So let's say I have created a constant hello. So I can check the start index and for last index of this constant using this hello.start index and hello.end index. And then I can use these indexes to print any of the character in this hello string. So let's say I want to print h over here, hello and with I can just enter my start index over here and this will return me h because the start index it will indicate to this h so if i say hello start index it will print h and not just start index and end index we can find the indexes after and before the start and end index so let's say hello dot index after start index so start index was h and after start start index we have e so it will return the index of e character and then this will print e over here now you might think that end index before character would be l but end index doesn't refer to this o character it refers to the last index of this string so over here start index was 0 but end index was 5 if i try to print over here hello 
end index it will give me error because at 5 index we do not have anything this is 0 1 2 3 and the last index is at 4 index so to get this O character over here you shouldn't be writing hello end index over here you have to write this hello dot index before end index so before end index means before the fifth index before the fifth index we will have fourth index and which will return our O character now we can also get index of any of the middle characters by using this offset parameter let's say you want to access this E character so the E character is away from our start index by one offset only so I can just say start index offset by one and then this will give me the index of this E character and then I can just simply print it now from the end if I want to get to this E character and that is offset by four characters over here if you see one two three and then four so then from end index I can say minus four offset and then from end index also it will give me this E character now I can also run a for loop on all of these indices so hello dot indices will return me each of these indexes so index of h index of e index of l all of these characters indexes will be returned in this for loop and then i can use this index to get each of those characters and then print it in this for loop this hello over here which you see is printed from this for loop now let's see how to get substrings from a string so let's say i have this string greeting hello world right now let's say i want to get the beginning of this substring i want to print hello only not the word so how do I get it so to print just hello from this hello word I can use the index of this comma and then I can print from start index to the comma index now how to get the index of comma we can use this greeting dot first index of comma if it doesn't return anything then we will just return the end index mostly because we do have comma we will get the index of this comma so I have the index of comma and now I can use that comma index inside my greetings uh, string like this so i can i can use these dot and dot and then less than our comma index now this will return only hello you can also do it like start index greeting dot start index and this will also work but since we anyways need it from start index we can assume that just just writing dot dot will started from the start index only so we can remove this and this would be a simple way to get this substring from this main string now this beginning substring will not be of type string so if you see if you if you see it is string dot subsequence it's not a string so if you want to convert it into a string you can just simply use this function string and then inside you can you can put your sub subsequence which you just created and then it will create a new string for you now let's say i want to print word over here not the hello now for this i need to get index of this w if i have the index of this w character then i can print from this character index to the end index right how do i get the index of this w character simply we can just use our greeting dot index function and inside i will just pass my start index which would be offset by seven so w is the seventh character in the string so i can just offset it by seven and then again i can use this greeting and then start index would be our end index one which will be the index of our character w and then we don't have to provide the end index for this greeting because we want to print it till the end index itself so that is why it will print word with the exclamatory mark now let's say i don't want this exclamatory mark i just want to print word then how we can do it so for that we need to provide our end index as well so let's create our end index too and in this one i need to get our i need to bypass the index of this exclamatory so from and this is at the first index so i will do greeting dot end index so from the end we will remove minus one so end index two will refer to this exclamatory and then if we use it like less than end index two over here i can say greetings ending index one will refer to this w character and ending index two will refer to this exclamatory and that's how i can get this word string 
from our greeting string. Now, how do I insert a character inside a string? So to insert a character inside a string, we have another function which is called insert itself. So let's say I want to insert X inside this star string. So I can do the stars dot insert X at. So I will have to specify at which index I want to insert it. So let's say I want to insert it after three stars. So I will say stars dot index stars dot start index and then offset by three. And then after these three stars, it will insert this X character. And that is how it looks like in the output. Now, what if you want to replace a substring with another substring? So let's say I have this stars two string, which is star star star, then X, Y, Z, and then X star star star. Now, what I want to do is replace this X, Y, Z and print A, B, C over here then what I can do is I can check the range of this x, y, z and then replace this range with a, b, c and that is what I'm doing over here. So stars 2 dot first range of x, y, z. So this x, y, z range will give me the range of this x, y, z and then on the stars 2 I can use this function called replace sub range and then I can replace the range of x, y, z with a new string which is called a, b, c and this will return me star, 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 a, b, c and then our stars again. And that's how you can replace substring inside our string as well. Now there is another way to do it as well. So we have another function called replace occurrences of. Now that our star 2 has been replaced and it has star, 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 a, b, c now let's say you want to convert it back to x, y, z. You want to replace a, b, c with x, y, z. Then you can do this stars two dot replace occurrences of a, b, c with x, y, z. So what it will do is it will replace all the occurrences of a, b, c in this string and convert it with x, y, z. So since we have only one occurrence, it will convert just one occurrence. But if we had multiple occurrences as well, it will convert all those multiple occurrences to x, y, z. Now last, I also wanted to include split and join. Now how do you split a string by using some characters? So let's say I want to split the string by the empty spaces. So I can simply use this function called components separated by. So let's say I created a constant string example and it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 separated by white spaces. Now I want to convert the string into an array and I can do it by simply calling this example.components separated by and then I can just give empty space and this will return me an array of strings. So as you can see over here we got an array of strings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if I want to convert it back to a string and this time instead of the spaces, instead of the white spaces in the output, I want to join them by comma. So you can join these array, array of string by using comma using this function joined. So string to array dot joined and then separator our and our separator would be comma. And this is it with string. I think this is good enough to start with string data structure and start solving question on string data structure, which we get in lead code or in our interviews. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.